question. Um, and that would, of course, come up the general practice of debt of the authority, not, not this school. Is that a try? Well, does that what you want me to say? I mean, <laughs>
Our staff and parents all know that every child who attends the school is priceless. The care and, edu care and education requirements of these most vulnerable children should never be evaluated by people who have not personally worked with PMLD. This is because they lack the insight and knowledge of how best to provide the care and education for children with such unique and individual needs. I feel that the people who put these proposals forward may have had the best intentions, but do not understand and recognise that this small and intimate school is the perfect setting to cater for and is tailored to all the needs of these children. For example, our teaching staff are experts at giving the children equal opportunities to access the national curriculum, but by adapting it to a very multi-sensory approach. Everything is bright, colourful and stimulating. If we can make it smell, then we will, and if it can be tasted, then it will be done. From knowledge of working with children with CLD, this teaching style is not always suited to their requirements, and they are less tolerant of the multi-sensory approach. We question how the two very differing needs can be taught in conjunction. We have heard now many times that our small school is not financially viable, but it is in this small environment that these children flourish as part of a small, safe, happy family, where they can receive the one-to-one -one individual attention they need and allowing for a strong bond of trust to be built up between staff and pupils, making a job at an in-depth school not a job, but the vocation and this is backed up by the very small turnover of staff. The future of the school, as you've heard, has been under a cloud for many years. It has been admitted by your offices that this uncertainty has contributed to what the council cites as a drop in pupil numbers over the years. We have also been told that parental preference has had an impact on our pupil numbers. We feel very proud to say that parents are still choosing the Lindell School for their children despite all the issues surrounding our future, and we have recently had two admissions and another two, two children are due to start. It is a devastating reality that whilst at Lindell, some of our children are at end of life care, and I can say with great sadness that 12 of our beautiful children have gained their angel wings and lost their fight for life. This is also tragically reflected in our pupil numbers. As a parent myself of a four-year-old boy who's just started in a reception year in a mainstream school, I had a range of worries. And for any parent placing their trust in school staff to care for their child as well as they can is very hard to do. I am fully aware that my concerns were relatively small and insignificant compared to the anxieties that our parents at Lindell must face when leaving their precious children in our care, given some of the very comfortable complex medical requirements these children have. The fact that these amazing parents give us their full trust to care for these fully dependent and vulnerable children is a testament to the excellent skill set, knowledge and large caring hearts displayed by my colleagues and all of the multi-professional team involved. The long and drawn out process of this consultation has taken its toll on all concerned at the school and I feel could have been handled better with staff not knowing from one week to the next what their future may be. The Cabinet recommendation states the Director of Children's Services will investigate if staff could be employed at receiving schools. In the consultation paper, however, which staff weren't all told was a legally binding document, it states staff are eligible for redeployment. This was a very thoughtless mistake to make, with staff feeling that they may have had some stability for the future and be able to ensure that the transition, even though unsettling for the children, would have been made smooth and ensuring the children's maximum safety. This was a misleading statement for both parents, staff and the public alike. We are all very confused how a legal document can still simply be altered later to suit the council. From December 2013, the council maintained they were minded to close the school and have produced a document in order to show that this was the best option. In the interest of fairness, said the council, they paid £10,000 for the services of an independent advisor to prove evidence of this. I have personally worked with these children since I was 21 and I am now 35 years of age. That is 14 years experience. There are over 30 staff members who have worked with the children, including nurses, physiotherapists and occupational therapists who have similar amount, if not more years of experience than myself. 
The parents are easily the most experienced, knowledgeable, and qualified experts on the needs of these children. Look behind me right now. These are the people who you should be listening to, but yet the council have chosen to ignore and to spend a huge amount of money for the advice of someone who has not worked with PMLD. This has been an incredibly challenging time for the school and all involved, and to coincide with the death of one of our precious children in July, meaning that this has been the toughest period that the school has known. Despite the anguish that many staff are feeling, we are 100% determined not to let this affect our performance levels. The children have and always do come first. At the last calling meeting, one of the children became poorly. His monitors alarmed and he required a medical intervention called suction. This is one of the procedures we had explained to the councillors not five minutes earlier is a daily occurrence at our school and that all staff are, deal, are, de are equipped to deal with such situations. One of the councillors became visibly upset and distressed. This councillor felt that they couldn't continue with the meeting and went home. Whilst I do have every sympathy for the councillor, our parents and staff have been suffering from this anguish caused by the council for 10 months. From the beginning, it seems there has been a policy of divide and conquer within the three special schools and their seniors' rivals. I very sincerely say that the staff at the Lindell School have nothing but the utmost respect and admiration for all the children, staff and parents at Stanley School and Ellen Park School. But as a united family, we at Lindell feel that our unique and caring environment, and they are the council's words, best serves the interest of our children and we are the best school to meet their needs. I repeat again that it has been a long and emotionally draining 10 months for all connected with the school, but we will fight the decision to close with all we have. And I'd just like to conclude with a quote from the American actor Morgan Freeman, attacking people with disabilities is the lowest display of power I can think of.
been right for literally a few minutes. You walk into the classroom, you said quick look, and walk back out again. There's no time actually spent with those children. As I say, I, I do work part time, so I could be mistaken. But from what I saw, it was a quick, fleeting visit into the classroom. There was no time or interaction with the children. But what about that?
schools funded for 55 places, but there are only uh, 34 people actually attending the school. Uh, over the years, as you've heard, the pupil numbers have gone down, and the funded places have gone down as well. So for 13 and 14, the places went into 40, but the actual uh, pupils attending the numbers are only 24. So over those years, on average, the authority has funded an extra 20 places over and above the number of people that attend the school. That's mainly because the previous uh, form of funding uh, didn't adequately provide funds for the, um, as I say, the band five high penalty getting the pupils who mainly go to to, uh, to to do that. So because the form that didn't give sufficient funding, the authority uh, funded extra places after school in order that the sufficient staffing were available to meet the needs of the uh, high penalty pupils. Mm. Is it possible to put a figure on that support that's been given? Um, I don't know where the authority found the money and contingency over the places, but that was an idea of what that financial support has been to help the school continue in its work. The um, the new funding arrangements that provides uh, nationally for £10,000 per place. So in very rough terms, you are talking about the authority uh, in, the, in the last eight years having put in an extra 20 places of £10,000, so roughly £200,000 additional funding. In order to recognise the fact that because of the needs of the um, uh, the high penalty in the uh, pupils, Staffing has to be there sufficient to meet those two needs. So the funds put in, and the doctor didn't reduce the number of places to match the uh, numbers of tenants.